Hi everybody, I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with another jumbo case of the brand new 2024 Top Series 1 Baseball. This is Pick Your Team 7. No vet common ship, everything else does. A lot of nice stuff, great design this year. And a big thank you to, to this group here for making Pick Your Team 7 happen. Here on Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thanks for showing Jaspies the love today. Matthew with double last spot mojo with the Rockies and Marlins. And for grabbing those, there's three teams remaining. I said, hey, if you, someone buys two, I'll give them the third for free. There you go, Matthew. Thanks for taking advantage of that. Otherwise, I don't know how much longer this break would have been sitting around. <clears throat> All right, the next one, the next break still has a couple of the big teams still left. $50 Dodgers, I think, are still around. I think the... So this is Pick Your Team 7. Pick Your Team 8. A's are still around for $39.99. Six left. Maybe we can uh, get that full by the time we finish this. And with a little luck, we might even be able to get to Pick Your Team 9 tonight. And once we get there, we can post another... Uh, I, think we can, I think we have enough cases to post another one. So if you want to help us out, or if you if you want to get your team in a, another fresh case, why not help out with some of the with the next break, right? Help us out with break. Pick your team eight, and then and pick your team nine, and then we can eventually post pick your team ten, and then you can snag your team there. Yeah, if you want to mix in a little hit parade, I'd love to do that as well. You know, if you're if you're getting sick of the series one, we can always pivot to do something else. <clears throat> All right, here we go. And we'll do these silver packs all at the end. <laughs> Chila reminding us that heart-shaped pizzas, less pizza for more money. I guess that's, that's if you're just buying pizza by the volume. You can't put a price tag on, on a warm, on a heart being warmed by a heart-shaped pizza, Gilo. Can you put a price on that? I mean, I guess Gilo has, but I can't. There's a great article in The Athletic about top series one. Written by Jay Felicio, the headline, How Tops Reinvented Series 1 for 2024. We have color at our disposal. Why not use it? So I thought that was uh, kind of interesting. We'll kind of read through some of the, uh, some excerpts over here. Yeah, they're, they're, the author's saying it's a neon border, black smoke backdrop. It's a massive departure from what we've seen over the years from Series 1 which he considers it's a bold new look. If you've collected Topps Cosmic or Fire Lines or even Upper Deck Skybox, Metal Universe, Kanini Phoenix, you've been treated to bold, colorful designs, a lot of imagination before, but for the flagship line and the gold standard of uh, in card collecting, it's a little wild, the author is saying. So there's a Q&A right there with Robert Grave, the designer, and then uh, Clay uh, Lorosky, the head of uh, product development. So if I, this is the clay I'm thinking of. I believe we've, we've met him before. I think Boss Man Mike has uh, has worked with him in the past. He's pretty. I think we've, he's pretty cool. Been collecting for a long time. He knows the hobby. He's been tops a long time too. So we'll kind of read. There. They did a Q and A. We'll read some there. Ooh, there's a thick card right here. Let's go this side first. All right. Here we go. Good luck, everybody. The key rookies that we're looking for would be Ellie De La Cruz, Evan Carter, Jason Dominguez, Junior Caminero is in the 1989 design. Here's Tyler O'Neill to 50. Nice. That'll be going to Matthew. Matthew Wood with that one. Grand Gamers, Jackie Robinson. And I think uh, Caminero is only in that 89 design.
One auto and a couple relics a box is what the box says. So good luck everybody. Tyler Wells, silver, obviously that will ship. There's our first Evan Carter. Obviously looking for numbered, maybe autographs of him, but that's a start. That'll be for Tristan and Texas. And we got a jersey and autograph, Christian Javier. 2023 postseason jersey auto. For the Strohs, that'll be for Zachary and the Astros. Eighteen out of fifty. Uh, oh, by the way, these base, right? Any of these league leader base cards will evenly distribute to those three teams right there for each different team card. If it's uh, if it ends up being a foil card or something like that or numbered. We'll do a left, center, right randomizer. We'll find a winner for those. Almost missed this one. Tigers team card. 135 to 2024. That'll be for David H. Got a Jason Dominguez insert. 2023 greatest hits. Get well soon. There's the wizard. And we've got Major League Material, Garrett Cole. He's of his jersey going to Mark and the Yankees. Longo, Arenado, Altuve. Ranger Suarez. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hector, yes, you are correct. Uh, Caminero's only cards are in that 1989 design. No base rookies. You are correct. They'll look like that. We've pulled a couple of those already in different cases. And uh, I spoiled it. Eddie Murray. 10 out of 25. It went on NSYNC there. That's going to go to EA and the Orioles. Big piece of his lumber. Game used. Pretty cool. We'll do a hit recap at the auto and hit recap at the end of this. There's an Ellie Della Cruz for the Reds. That'll be for Jeremy and the Red Legs. Yeah, I did see that, Gilo. Some Niners players came out and said they had no idea about the OT rules. And then I think there was some damage control from the Niners. Kyle Shan had said that they did discuss it, but only with certain players, I guess. I think Brock Purdy said he knew all about what the OT strategy was going to be. So, I don't know. Sound like it was damage control.
And then what was the other thing? I don't know what the what the numbers say, but in OT, kicking off, or if you win the toss in OT, is it better to receive or defer? I feel like Shanahan got kind of crushed by saying that he wanted to receive the ball first. But you're not supposed to do that, I guess, mathematically. Since you get the ball back, you're supposed to let the other team do their thing. And then the second possession would be, would be yours. And then you know what you have to do. I guess that makes more sense. I guess that does make sense. There's Mark with the Yankees. But then I think, I think the, the Niners kind of walked that back too. And was, it was like, uh, and they were like, well, the defense was on the field previous. I mean, and then, so they were gassed, I guess. But I don't know. There were commercials. There was the coin flip. They went to commercial. But yeah, the, the, the refs explained the rules pretty clearly. But I, I guess the question was in terms of like, well, I guess, yeah, I think like Kyle Juszczyk was like, I, I have no idea. Until, I, until he looked at the screen and was like, and read the OT rules on the, on the uh, scoreboard, the video board. Right, I guess kicking first. So like, so if Kyle Shanahan deferred it, you know what you need to do on the second possession. I guess that's, that's true. <clears throat> Going back to that article, so they, so the Athletic interviewed the designer, Robert Grade, and head of product development, Clay uh, Lorosky, who apparently has been with Top for 24 years. That's right, so this is the Clay that, I'm talk that I know. Played college baseball at Pepperdine and considered a Topps historian. Grave is based in Brooklyn and Paris, which is, that sounds nice, and has been a senior designer at Topps for a decade. He attended the revered Savannah College of Art and Design, majoring in sequential art, comics. His favorite comic artist legends Jack Kirby, creator of hundreds of iconic characters, <clears throat> like Iron Man, and Jim Lee, who illustrated X-Men number one, the highest selling comic book of all time. So, uh, so the first question was from the Athletic Series 1 is historically Top's most traditional release. Why such a bold refresh now? Clay says we new, do a new design and refresh, quote unquote refresh every year, but we wanted to bring something different. I always tell the team that 20, 10, 20, 30 years from now, you should be able to look at a design and know exactly what year it's from. This is one of the most memorable de designs I've seen in the last 45, 50 years. I think we'll be able to look back and be able to identify just at first glance, I'm speaking for him now, at first glance that that was the 2024 set. It's interesting. Some years the design is formed from what we can do in a, from a print perspective. Sometimes there are tech and volume limits, but here we got to play with some foil in a way we haven't previously. Having the tech open up really lets you try new things. I think that's, uh, I think what we've done really stacks up against the 70 years pr uh, prior. Interesting. That's some considerations that the, the lead designers have on stuff like this. And Tony Gonsolin pops as our auto in this box. That goes to Chris Parent and my Dodgers. Dodgers starting spring training a little early. Their regular season starts a little early. They'll be in Korea playing the Padres. That's a one of one. I don't know if I that gave me any indication that that was a one of one. Nice. Obviously, with so many cards in Series 1, one of ones are extremely hard to find. Chris Parent... All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Go Dodgers. I think he's working his way back from injury, so we might not see him until the middle of the season, but when healthy, he's, he's really solid. Could be a could be a top of the rotation guy for a lot of teams. 
Vlad Guerrero Jr., piece of the jersey, going to Kevin in Toronto. But obviously, you got to be healthy. I mean, he, Tony Gonsolin has been struggling with that a little bit. Be interesting to see what Emmett Sheehan does. I think there is a spot open for a fifth rotation spot, maybe even a sixth. Let's see what the Dodgers do there. My Lakers on in the background playing Logan's Jazz. They're tied at 84 apiece with five left in the third. Seth Lugo to 73, the black border. You can see it's black all the way around. For the Friars, that's going to be for Richard. Oh, they should have filled that case first. Then they would have gotten this case. And that will be a left, center, right randomizer, that gold foil National League leaders. And you guys are pretty good. Another Ellie Della Cruz for Jeremy and the Reds. There's Giancarlo Stan, big piece of the lumber right there. For the slugger, that's going to be for Mark and the Yankees. Carter for Tristan in Texas. There you go, Spencer did witty, making some big contributions to the Lakers already. Got a uh, Stone Garrett to 2024 for the National, and that's for Matthew, and an Esther Cortez gold foil. I see Churro. Logan Webb, Matt Olson. The Athletic asks, Robert, you said you wanted to bring the joy uh, bring back the joy of collecting a complete set. 
and their design was an attack on monochrome. Can you expand on this? This is the lead designer for, for series one. When you're going through a bunch of packs, Graves says, the base card is the majority of what you get. You don't want to see the same thing over and over again. This adds some variety, some interest. So maybe you do slow down and look through them. Why? We have color at our disposal. Why not use it, he says. So maybe that accounts for all the different team colors in the neon. Clay says, for the most part, if you look at the 70 plus years of our base card designs, the most consistent thing was is a, is a white border. Doing a dual color border is a big difference. And Robert didn't just pick color, he picked color in a way that really pops. The special tech we used on this card this year helped accentuate that color. I guess there's special technology here. It speaks to what's going down out there aesthetically in fashion and what pop culture is gravitating to. To me, this says 2024. What do you like most about this year's design? Clay says, not only is the neon pushing the envelope when it comes to your traditional trading card design, but uh, we had access to new technology that gives the cards a bit of a shine. Interesting. Once you get them in your hands, they look even better. It was a departure from what we normally see. There's a movement from inside the hobby that wants to see new, fresh, different. I love the people are already gravitating to it because it's gonna push this thing even bigger. Robert says, I think we pulled off the neon. There's some shine to it and a little further down the line. It's gonna look awesome on chrome, which is what I mentioned earlier. Oh, and there's a question about the design process. And we'll get to that in the next box. So stay tuned for that. Maybe <laughs> get some Gen Z lingo on these cards. It'll be like, they'll, they can have an insert that's like no cap stats. And they'll, they'll be like, they'll highlight some interesting, some can you believe it sort of stats on the back. No cap, Michael Garcia, you know, had a 20 game hitting streak in 2023. No cap. And here's Anthony Rizzo. Piece of the lumber to 199 for Mark. Or could they go more tongue in cheek, Gilo? What do you think about that? What if the no cap insert set is literally a player without his hat on? Is that too much? Is that too on the nose? And there's a Parker Met. I don't, it doesn't matter which column I start in. I feel like I, I pulled the auto in the first one. Anyway, Parker Meadows for the Tigers. That's going to go to David H. And Detroit. I'm trying to, you know, trying to save the auto for a little bit later in the box. But hey, if it wants to pop, it can pop. I'll just go with it. <laughs> Do BuzzFeed top 10 facts about this player? I'm surprised there isn't more of that. Like, what if they started using, like, like, uh, <laughs> they started getting, like, sponsors? Like, Pepsi could do a sponsorship for, you know, all rookie cards or something like that. Do a refreshing rookies insert sponsored by by Coca-Cola. Mickey Moniak, Marcus Simeon. All right, the sheesh subset. Surprise! There hasn't been like a, has there been a let's go? 
feel like that could be like in a leaf set. Let's go with a bunch of O's. Let's go. That's what he's saying right here, J.B. Crawford. And Lane Thomas at 2024 and a Hunter Brown relic. Oh, there are. Oh, there are. Let's go inserts in Bowman U basketball. That's right. I think they have done that before. Strohs. That's going to be for Zach. Lane Thomas is going to be for Matthew K. It's to 2024. Another Ali Dela Cruz for Jeremy. Nathan Nivaldi, Felix Batista. Zach Geloff, green. That's to four ninety nine for the A's. Nice little color match there for EA Sports. It's in the game. This is a gold foil, so we'll uh, we'll do left right randomizers on this. My teammates now. Angels. That'll be Jeremy, Chris, Parent, Dodgers. So that'll be a a rando. The base ones, if any, will be evenly distributed between those two teams. But since that foil is a little extra, especial, there's Bruce Star Gratterall, his buddy Kershaw. The Athletic asks, the head designer for Series 1, 2024 edition. Do you have a process? And he says the process changes from product to product. Sometimes it's like throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing what sticks. <clears throat> Sometimes I have something in mind going in. I work backward for, for this. Like I want a color border, but what effects can I do to make it stand out? That slowly evolved over time to being a neon. Then I asked, how is neon built? It has tubes, all the same thickness, so I use that throughout the design. I work until I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Now, this article in The Athletic about Series 1, which is pretty interesting, I think the, the designer goes on to say he was inspired by the 1986 set. So, you know, putting the, a modern twist on that. I guess he worked with the guy that, with the person that pulls all the images for these. You know, he likes having, you know, the ability to maybe, if a guy is scaling the wall to rob a home run, it's going to look cool if he's reaching over the team name. So he's kind of, kind of into that too.
And apparently the main designer is still an avid comic reader, so that all that type of stuff will will leak in. He loves art and sports. So he really likes designing trading cards. He's into mid-century modern, that bleeds into his design. Which might be like that that blueprint insert right there. It's kind of it's kind of a good vibe too. Having diverse inspirations is the best thing you can do. He says, if I'm watching a movie I see framing or a design I like, I'll take note. I don't want to limit it to one source. There's Brendan Rogers. That's to four ninety nine. Yeah, I'd like to see more of that too. Like more of a how it's made. Like I want to see what, what goes on at the factory. You know, maybe that'll give us collectors a better understanding of why, you know, of how hard or maybe easy it is. Maybe, maybe we'd feel a little bit more sympathetic when mistakes happen in, in products. Maybe be amazed at how, you know, I just think it'd be fascinating. How do they make Chrome cards? There was a question in the athletic article that asks about if there's any Easter eggs in here, and the, the answer was pretty coy. But it links, there's like a little edit and says, there's a, uh, there's a literally, in blaster boxes, I guess, there's an egg <laughs> parallel with eggs in the background. We got uh, El Harris Montero, piece of the City Connect jersey. That'll go to the Rocks. That's going to go to Matthew, last spot mojo. What seems like a Rex thing? Like he'd find that funny? Like if an Easter egg card would actually had eggs in the background? To be an Easter egg? Yeah, I could see that. Could be a could be a sounds like a Rex idea. I feel like he would also sorry, Patrick Wisdom to 199 Cubs. But I feel like he always uh, Rex tends to stack jokes on each other. And then overdoes overcooks it. So like I feel like he would also go so far as to be like it would be a die cut in the shape of an egg. That would be the card with the egg parallel. Woo! Brian Woo, that's gonna be for David H. and the Mariners. A rainbow of eggs? I actually kinda wanna see that now. <laughs> Now, in the comment section of The Athletic, there are a lot of favorable, positive comments. There's always that one jaded person right here. Jaded person that, I, that will remain nameless unless you have an access to that. If you're excited by anything Fanatics has done in the hobby, you're either new and I'm happy for your enthusiasm to last while it can, or this is a blatant corporate puff piece on par for Fanatics. I miss when baseball cards really were fun and not squeezed to profit maximization death. I think this person doesn't realize that that's always been like that. <laughs> they are a for-profit entity.
I mean, unless he's going all the way back to the days when it's like, you know what? It just used to be a little bonus when you're buying smokes, when you're buying cigarettes in the 1910s, 1890s or whatever. Brian Wu again. Then I suppose I wasn't, wasn't like that, but... There's Brandon Woodruff to 2024. But most of the comments are nice. My kiddos love sports cards. Currently really into hockey. Thanks for the article about these awesome cards. Great article. Loved it. As a longtime collector, I was excited about the clear departure from safe. It's growing on me. Pleasantly surprised at their designs. Benjamin clearly not following the hobby very well. I feel like we need a wake to mark the last fun days of Tops before Fanatics ruins it all. Someone's gonna, someone has to let him know that Fanatics is, has been running Tops for a number of years. Two, three years already. The comment section is always fun in any uh, in any place. This guy arguing about. about Topps is owned by Fanatics and that Fanatics is destroying jerseys. Players knows how terrible the new jerseys look and feel. But Nike does those jerseys, so that guy's a little off. The Doomsday card clerics also cracked me up as well. Oh, that's a relic right there. I'm still really <laughs> gotta close this. Go down a comments rabbit hole. But the Doomsday card people also cracked me up as well. It's something I say, I say frequently, you know. The phrase I say frequently is that every decade everyone has written the obituary for the hobby. And every time it's rewritten, everyone's convinced. This time it's true. I know we've said it before, but this time it's true. Remember when Topps was throwing pallets of 1952 baseball, tops baseball into the Hudson. And hobby's over, hobby's dead. Every decade, every year, probably the hobby. This is it, this is the one. This is gonna kill it. No, kids aren't into, kids, it's all digital now. Kids don't, kids don't want trading cards anymore. The hobby is dead. Overprinting, hobby is dead. Panini's gonna ruin the hobby. Panini entering the hobby is gonna ruin it. These super expensive boxes, that's gonna ruin the hobby. Uh, it's gonna kill the hobby, no one's gonna buy that. You know, Fanatics is gonna ruin the hobby. Panini, you know, yeah, so. Ex 
companies signing players to exclusive, that's gonna ruin the hobby. And, or kill it for good. But yet, here we are. Here we are, it's been around since the 50s. I mean, really, since the tobacco card days, the trading cards have been around for a while. I don't think they're going away anytime soon. I think we'll be okay. And are there ups and downs in any industry? Obviously, of course. But as for, but I don't know how many times the hobby's been ruined <laughs> because of decisions that manufacturers have made. It's over, it's killed, it's done. Lakers still up, 119, 107, 717 left in the game. It's Natalie Dell. We got really gotta find out. I feel like I've what I've I've done like what? Almost three cases now? Three full cases. I feel like we haven't seen too many Ellie Della Cruz or Evan Carter numbered cards or let alone an autograph. I mean at least let's start with something numbered or gold foil or something like that. I'm sure they're not it's not meant to be easily found, but you know, three cases in, getting a little impatient now. Let's see something here. The stuff has been solid, but we want more than solid at this point. Tyler Glass now. I'm sure has everyone seen the uh the uncanny likeness of Tyler Glass now and Oppenheimer's Cillian Murphy. Cillian Murphy? Killian Murphy? Hachimura with 30 points. There's Volpe, orange, nice. 68 out of 299, Yankees. It's Mark. The Bronx Bombers, and we got a piece of Ozzy's lumber right here. You're a wizard, Ozzy. And Guardian Leviosa. Was, I, I think Ozzy was decent. Everyone knows him for the glove. Ozzy Smith decent with the, with the lumber, maybe? Yeah. A lifetime 262. That's pretty good. Very light hitter. He did only hit 28 home runs in his career. But he's, he's had some doubles. He's got a little speed. He's got some, got some triple speed here. Not bad. Josh, what's going on? Basketball is broken. Are we talking about... Talking about the refs. A lot of people unhappy with that that Knicks game. Leading people to believe that the fix is in. I don't know. It might be. I feel like it's hard to, everyone talks about rigging football games or baseball games. I feel like that's kind of hard. Ooh, nice home field advantage for Nando Tatis Jr. I feel like basketball, there's, I feel like there's ways, but I wouldn't, I don't think if, if a ref was on the take. Nice one, Padres. That's going to go to Richard, Richard Hastings with that one. I don't know if they would do it on such an obvious play like that. It's like you're usually kind of shaving 
I mean, if you're point shaving, if you're a ref trying to do that, I feel like that's kind of hard, but you're going to get caught pretty quickly. But how did Tim Donaghy do it? Don Donaghy? Donag Tom? I mean, that, that ref? I think it was totals. I think you just kind of edge the total one way or the other, but I want to say that I mean, he was able to get away with it for a while. I don't think... I mean, unless the ref's an idiot, you know. He's in deep with the mob or something like that. Oops, sorry. I'm knocking over some cards here. And nice, Alex Kirilov. The, the team logo design right here. Those are pretty cool. They're not numbered, but pretty short, shorter, shorter printed. Luke with that one. And then we got Major League Material, Paul Goldschmidt for the Cardinals. That's for Matthew Wood. Rui Hachimura, 33 points. Is it time to... I've not made a dust-off call in a second or two. We're, Rex and I were talking about that yesterday, but maybe Rui Hachimura. If you can string together a few games like this, be some, a player to dust off. His rookie cards would be a uh, him as a wizard. Here's Matt Walner, 2024. I kind of like seeing Hachimura start to warm up a little bit. We need that. Lakers need that. Another Evan Carter for Tristan in Texas. And an Adley Rushman autograph. There we go. Nice one. EA with the O's. It's pretty good. Save some threes for the next game, guys. Even Torian Prince knocking down threes, too? We'll do the final box, we'll do silver packs, we'll do randomizers, and then we'll do a recap. And then we'll see what's going on with the uh, next break. Pick your team eight is down to four. We got time to do it tonight. Plenty of time. We can do pick your team eight and nine. And then I'll see if there's a case left over for us to do uh, to your team 10. All right, 
Final box. Good luck, everybody. Hunter Brown, Acuna Jr. Oh, and there's O'Neill Cruz, piece of his jersey. It'll be for EA and the Pirates. Braves team card, Ted Williams. Rizzo, Acuna Jr. Keller, Christopher Morell. That'll be part of the left center right randomizer. And a Brandon Woodruff autograph. Brew Crew, Mike G. Nice. To 199, 37 out of 199. And then we've got Max Fried to 2024. Roy with the Braves. Matt McLean, Fernando Tatis Jr. Got Hunter Green, Major League Material for Jeremy and the Reds. Curtis Mead, Rod Carew. Say Suzuki, Acuna Jr. Ken Griffey Jr. flipped around. Oh, that's a blue border, Ken Griffey Jr. Not numbered, though. The Rockies might be the only team with that purple color. Everyone's either red, white, yellow, or blue. The neon. Ellie Dela Cruz. How's it going? Anything exciting happening over there? Yeah, I hit the 101 Ellie. The 101 Ellie's out? Yeah. It's done? I wish.
And that, my friends, is that. That's your break. Angelo Russell had 17 assists. What? Are you serious? 11.17 assists. Jeez. Now, if, if D'Angelo Russ could play a little defense in the playoffs, that would be awesome, in addition to what he's doing offensively. And that Dylan Windler getting minutes. Remember Dylan Windler? No. We got Colin Castleton getting minutes right now, too. Or a minute, I guess. Hachimura is like over 30 points. No LeBron, no problem. Logan's, Logan's like, my jazz stink. Yeah, Raiders, Raiders, Lakers are doing kind of the thing they kind of did last year after the trade deadline. They, they went off on a bunch of... On, Finished like 18 and 8 or something like that. I don't know. I feel like the Jazz were having a decent season earlier on. I thought this game was going to be a little more competitive. There's a junior Caminero. Ellie Dela Cruz. Nice. And the silver packs. Jeremy with the reds. Junior Caminero, EA, and the Rays. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I may, maybe you're just like trading and picking and trading and picking and trading and picking until you end up looking like the OKC Thunder. No auto, no numbered cards in these silver packs? Doesn't look like it. Or maybe, well, let's play the whistle. Hey, there is an autograph, Henry Davis. Your former number one overall pick. Catcher from Louisville, produ produced catcher Will Smith for my Dodgers and number 226 out of 299. EA with the Pirates, it's in the game. Nice. And that, my friends, is that. Thanks, everybody. Pick your team seven in the books. Pick your team eight down to four. We still have time for that tonight. Let's do some randomizing here. So we're gonna, let's flip to random.org. New dice, new list. We'll do a left center right randomizer, and then we'll do the left right randomizer for the Otani bets. And any other two player cards that are like that. Or no, the base will be evenly distributed, sorry. All right, let's roll a randomize it 11 times, six and a five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So left cards on, the, on these two triple player cards, it'll go to the left team right there. Uh, we got Blue Jays and uh, Braves. 11 times for that uh, Otani Betts card. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11th and final time. Stays with the left side on this one, too. That's going to go to the Otani side. So that'll be for Jeremy Smith and the Angels. My apologies to Chris Perrin. My Dodger Joe Mojo did not work for you this time. All right, but appreciate you getting in. Appreciate everybody getting in. Nice little finish here with that Henry Davis. Some nice autograph. That Adley Rushman was nice. Home field advantage, Tatis Jr. Snap a couple pictures of those. Got Parker Meadows, piece of Rizzo's lumber. That Gonsolin, one of one Gonsolin. 
Eddie Murray on the thick relic card stock. That was to 25. And a jersey and autograph. Krishna Javier is pretty good as well. There you go, gang. Nice little break. That was Pick Your Team 7. I'm Joe. I'll see you for Pick Your Team 8 a little bit later tonight. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com, I hope.